Um, thanks very much, uh, everyone, for uh, inviting me to come to your meeting and speak for a few minutes. Um, I happen to be in the country. I, I just spent four days in, uh, in Vancouver. Um, I had a lecture at the University of British Columbia, but I also took the opportunity to look at the housing situation in BC and uh, particularly related to the Olympics. Um, but uh, and I thought it would be good to stop by in Toronto and uh, see how um, everyone is doing here. And it's, it's wonderful to hear about the, um, the efforts that all of you are collectively making uh, to develop a provincial um, housing strategy based on the right to housing. I think that is really uh, a, a wonderful initiative and I congratulate all of you for doing that. Um, I am, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, um, Special Rapporteurs at the United Nations are um, a creation of the United Nations Human Rights Council. As Michael mentioned, this is the highest policy-making body. On, it's an intergovernmental body. Canada is a member, um, highest policy-making body in the UN on human rights. And okay, and, and periodically they appoint uh, in an independent, honorary capacity individuals from around the world to look at specific issues. And in the year 2000. Uh, the UN had uh, realized, after receiving information from around the world, primarily from civil society groups, that housing was a major crisis uh, across the world. Uh, homelessness, inadequate, insecure housing, forced evictions, and a range of issues. So they, they decided to appoint a special rapporteur to look at that. So I was a rapporteur from 2000 until 2008. Um, and as part of the work uh, of rapporteurs, um, we we conducted two to three official missions uh, to countries in different parts of the world, and one of the missions that I did in October of 2007 was to Canada, as Michael mentioned. Um, and and the, the mission report um, was tabled before the Council. There were four issues that I was looking at uh, as I traveled across the country, met with uh, civil society groups, took testimonies from people on the ground and met with officials and institutions. Uh, one was, of course, the issue of homelessness, because there had been growing concern in the UN um, since the early 90s, actually, that, uh, that homelessness in Canada was, uh, was increasing. And the United Nations Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights uh, actually indicated that the problem was so severe that, that it was a national emergency. And, and as we have seen, actually, the problem has gotten worse. So that was one of the issues I looked at. I looked at the issue of affordability of housing, the whole area of um, speculation, and how that was having an impact uh, on the availability of housing. I looked at women's rights to adequate housing. Um, and, uh, and I looked at the impact of, um, of the Olympics uh, in, in Vancouver. And I, of course, also visited um, a number of Aboriginal communities and looked at the conditions both on and off reserve um, of Aboriginal people. And, and um, so when, when, I, um, uh, when I submitted my report uh, based on the fact-finding work uh, and, you know, on, on the um, huge amount of information that I received from civil society organizations, it's remarkable the amount of uh, material that is available uh, and that was very, very helpful because from the side of the government I didn't get the kind of statistics that I wanted. For example, that I didn't find an accurate assessment of how many people are homeless in the country, nor was there a definition of that. Um, so my recommendations were primarily, um, well, overarching sort of recommendation was that there needs to be a legal recognition of the right to adequate housing. Uh, as an essential first step uh, for the state to implement um, adequate housing. And I recommended that uh, this right, this fundamental human right, be recognized in federal and provincial legislations as an inherent part of the Canadian legal system. And as you all know, there has been some progress there with uh, the Bill C-304, and I'm very happy to see how far that has come in the Parliament, and we'll know more in the coming weeks. Um, and, and, uh, and I also recommended that uh, human rights legislation in all Canadian jurisdictions be amended to fully include 
uh, economic, social, and cultural rights. And it's not only the right to housing, but a lot of other rights that are not uh, curiously not recognized in Canadian legislation, even though Canada has made international commitments uh, on this issue. Um, I also call for there to be a comprehensive and coordinated national housing policy uh, based on the indivisibility of human rights approach um, and the protection of the most vulnerable. And um, I call for the national strategy to include measurable goals and timetables, consultation and collaboration with affected communities, complaints procedures and transparent accountability uh, measures. I also call for um, federal, provincial and territorial authorities um, to work in close cooperation and coordination. I noticed there was a sort of a blame game going on between the provinces and the federal level. Uh, and uh, for there to be um, a commitment towards stable and long-term funding. I think that's one of the issues you're working on in your provincial plan. Um, and, uh, and of course, there are a number of recommendations on um, on what needs to be done um, in, in, in areas where uh, Aboriginal people live. Uh, I was very disturbed by the conditions that I saw, uh, particularly around um, oil and energy extraction and the impact of having on communities, and of course the disproportionate um, you know, presence of Aboriginal people in cities, in uh, homelessness, people who are homeless, and women were facing violence and so on. Um, so, um, and of course I recommended that um, Canada must, uh, it needs to embark again on a large scale building of social housing. I was very surprised that that had actually stopped um, effectively. Um, and, and of course that the federal government should work with the provinces and territories to ensure that there's a consistent framework of tenant protection. This is, um, in light of the affordability question, of course, it becomes even more, even more serious. So these were these were some of the recommendations. Um, as Michael mentioned, the the government has um, the federal government uh, initially reluctantly, but I think after pressure from the UN Human Rights Council last year, uh, has accepted some of these recommendations. And I think we need to track very closely how they are. Um, you know, complying with that, um, failing uh, there being a national strategy. And I think the work that you're doing here in Ontario uh, would certainly provide a that is not only, um, uh, certainly for other provinces, but also put pressure at the federal level for there to be a, a national, um, national housing strategy. Um, the, I mean, my sense of following the work uh, on housing in the last 15 years, uh, in Canada, I also worked for some years with, a, with an NGO called Habitat International Coalition, and we assisted Canadian groups in the early 90s um, when they presented their reports to the different UN treaty bodies. Uh, and so I've been, I've been following the work, and I, I would say um, that all those years of civil society work, the local, national, uh, international level, all the years of attention from youths, different UN human rights bodies, I think is certainly having an impact at the national level, and and uh, that impact on 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 the federal government, I think, um, will only come to fruition if there is pressure from the provinces. And in that context, I think all of you must recognize that your work is very, very, very important. Um, and and uh, I think there is there is a kind of climate now which allows for. Uh, there to be uh, a bill in Parliament recognizing the right of housing and calling for a national housing strategy. There's a climate that allows for uh, there to be uh, provincial strategies. There's a climate that allows for a constitutional challenge, a court challenge, uh, to be uh, which has a process which has started um, to recognize the right of housing. Uh, so I think that. Um, the, the, the time the time is right uh, for there to be much more sort of more coordinated civil society uh, mobilization and and once again I, I think the work that all of you are doing is, is very very important one more aspect I wanted to just touch upon is um, there have been questions uh, that I have received from a number of groups in Canada um, asking about um, something called the right to the city I don't know if you're familiar with this concept.